house of God, huh? Now, for your own soul's sake. See, that's why the Bible is redundant. The Lord says things over and over because we're stiff-necked, hard-headed people. Okay. Calm down and listen to one another. And more importantly, listen to this Bible. Right? Real quick, real quick, I see you looking at the sign. What's your name, big brother? What's your name? Who? Congo, what's your name, brother? Tosi. Listen, listen up. Because it's something happening out here, but you got to pay attention. Don't think just because somebody's across the street and they mention in the word Jesus that they are bringing to you the commandments. They're not telling you what's going to save your life out here, right? This ain't really about them. This is about y'all. Because for the last 400 years, we've been deceived. Everything that we've been told is a lie, right? What's coming out across the street is a lie. Brother, when you walked up, Tosi, right? You was like, you asked what we, was we Muslim? You said that the religion that we've been given was given to us by the masses. All of those things that you were saying is absolutely correct. So let's bring some clarification. We are not a religious group, okay? What we are, are the Israelites of the Bible. That's right. You gotta be able to look in here and see who you are so you know where you fit in this story. That's this right. whole Bible was written to the Israelites, by the Israelites, for the Israelites. That's right. It has nothing to do with no other nationality, no other group of people. I'm gonna show you how you know what's coming out across the street is a lie. Just to cut it. Is a woman supposed to be able to teach the word of God? Get that. Yeah, I think anybody, a prophet, anybody supposed to teach people. The Bible says so. Can a woman teach? Yes. Who should she be teaching? Other sisters. She should be teaching the children. She should be teaching those at her house. The man, the man is the head, right? First, get, hold that. Get Corinthians for me first. We just gonna cut this down real quick. The only way you can get your name written in this book is to keep these commandments. Anything other than that is false. It's a false narrative. Watch this. Your name Paul? Listen to this. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Says the head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. And the head of Christ is God. It gives you the order. The most high God. Jesus Christ, man and then the woman. Read. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Tosi, Congo, watch this. The Bible says every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, read, dishonoreth his head. They say you dishonor with your head. Why you take your head off? The brother, real, real quick, it's simple. The brother heard it. Read it again. Watch this, Tosi. Watch this, Congo. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. It says he dishonored his head, right? The brother, real quick, snatched his head off. You just snatched your head off. Not because of what I said, because that's what the Bible said, right? That's, that's repentance. It's not singing a song, throwing your hands up, uh, dancing around, catching tongues. That's not the spirit. Read. But every woman, but every what? Every woman. Who's teaching across the street right now? That's a woman teaching, right? Let's see what the Bible says. That prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. With her head what? Uncovered. Everybody, look across the street. I'm going to show y'all how you know that is not out of the Bible. The sister across the street is bringing out the scriptures. The Bible says what? But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. Is that sister's head covered? Is 
the sister's head covered. Oh. We dishonoring her head. She's dishonoring her head. That's what I'm telling you. She's not coming, thus said the Lord. That sister should be home somewhere dealing with the younger sister. That's dealing right. with her kid, guiding the house. Right? Read it again from the top. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So not only is the sister out of order, all the brothers that's over there with her, they out of order too. Because they're not teaching the sister, thus saith the Lord. Look at the sister. How she should be dressed. Read. The, Watch this. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Is that a woman across the street? Is she adorning herself in modest apparel? One of y'all brothers, help me out. What does modest mean? What does modest mean? I can't hear you, brother. Come forward. Come on, help me out. What does modest mean? Humble. Humble. Look, modest. Somebody look it up on their phone real quick. Modest is not drawing attention to yourself sexually. Okay? You cannot have a woman over there with tight pants on showing all her hips and her curves saying that she's modest. That is not of the most high God. Is, the, is she dressed properly? Not only because it's tight, the woman is not even supposed to have on pants. Now, am I saying that? No. Let's see what the Bible says. You we gotta stop this foolishness, y'all. Everybody look across the street. Is the sister have on pants? Yes or no? Yes? Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Is Deuteronomy in the Bible? It, it's, it's a Bible, right? Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. The woman shall not wear that that pertaineth unto a man. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Joshua 6, read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read it one more time. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read, now I'm gonna show you how the Most High God, he's dealing with all of us. This is not to bash a woman, because a man gotta be in the spirit as well, read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now let me ask you something. If the pastor was over there with a dress on, reading the Bible, would y'all be listening to him? So why are you listening to a woman that's over there reading the Bible with pants on? Y'all understand that? Sis. Come here real quick, sis. Help me out. How you doing today? What's your name? Miss Sharon. Miss Sharon. Miss Sharon, how old are you if you don't mind me asking? 64. 54, okay. Do you remember your grandmother wearing pants? You do. Do you remember your great grandmother? You, have you ever met your great grandmother? Do you remember her wearing pants? No. She always had a robe on. Watch this. Read this again. This is why we never saw our elder women in our community wearing pants. Because they knew what they were supposed to be wearing. Read it again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the scriptures say that a woman who's wearing pants is an abomination. The scriptures also say that a man that's wearing a dress is an abomination. Sis. Come in, sis, because I seen you when I when I read that, you said really. Sis, you think it's okay for a woman to wear pants? Sis. Yes, she can, she can still go about her business. Listen, let me tell you why a woman wear pants, especially any type of pants that's revealing your shape like this, is out of order. The abortion rate in our community is exponentially high. Rape in our community is exponentially high. Children born out of wedlock is exponentially high. You know why? Because we walk around and we lust upon our sisters that are dressed like this. Like what? Like, so sis, you're dressed in Mars. Go back to Timothy. So, you got to get Don't let Timothy protect me. Watch this, sis. I'm my, name, my name is Dope Down. Yes, ma'am. Watch this. What's your name? You don't want to give your name? Okay. I'm saying give me a point, Yes, ma'am. Watch this. 
Def so we're about to give you the definition of modest. Unassuming or moderate in Nah, that ain't that man. What? So sis, modest is not bringing sexual attention to yourself, right? Yes, ma'am. You showing you sh no, ma'am. Listen, you're showing all of your curves. You are showing all of your everything. No, brother, sister, we are not born naked. Listen, you cannot. You have a husband. You have a wife? Yes, ma'am, I do have a wife. Okay, moving forward. Husband? Moving forward. Okay, most of our sisters are not dressed. Come on, come on right here. Most of our sisters are not dressed modestly, which means the attention that they get from a man is not biblical. Watch this. The term modest fashion or modest dressing refers to a fashion trend in women of wearing less skin revealing clothes, especially in a way that satisfies their spiritual and stylistic requirements for reasons of faith, religion, or personal preference. So sis, make sure that you understand, these are not my words. This is what the Bible is saying. Read it again. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves. The word adorn. The word adorn means to make oneself more beautiful. So according to the Bible. I don't even had nothing fake with me. No, no, absolutely. What makes you more beautiful is making more modest. The Bible says that the more you cover yourself up, the more beautiful you are. Right. Because when you meet a man, you don't want a man. Listen. No, what makes you beautiful is your spirit, sister. No, what makes you what makes a sister beautiful is her spirit. Absolutely. Read it again. Don't listen to my words. Let's see what the Bible says. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly or red. The scripture is telling you that it's not important what you look like on the outside. What's most important is your spirit. Your spirit is based on these commandments. The reason that our sisters are in such a low estate because the men don't treat them like they deserve to be treated. The reason that the men don't treat you like a princess because you're not just like a princess. The reason that the men don't treat you like a princess is because you don't talk like a princess. The reason that the men don't treat you like a princess is because you do not walk and act like a princess. That's right. There's certain things that become a woman, which is modest. Same face, not wanting to argue, to bicker, to go back and forth, but rather to humble down and listen to the word of God. That's the problem. Read 1 Corinthians 11 again. The sisters always want to be in charge. The sisters always think that they can be out front like the man. That's not what the scripture says. These are not my words. Read the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2. Now I pray to you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Uh -huh. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. By right now, sisters are dishonoring their heads. Most of the sisters, if you ask them, they're going to tell you, I don't have a head. They don't have a brother in their life that's going to instruct them according to the Bible. They don't have a husband in their life that's going to instruct them according to the Bible. The sisters don't have a father in their lives that's going to instruct them according to the Bible. No, they don't. It's evident. Because if you did, no, because your, because your brother, your father, or, or loved one would have told you that, sister, you can't come outside with underwear on. Read it again. Just listen to what he's saying. Read natural. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto 
people ain't mad. So the scripture says a woman should not wear, meaning what do you wear? Clothes, right? Right? So it says the woman should not wear that which pertains. So the word pertains means belong. You with me? Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertains unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So it says a woman, it gives no pain. A woman is wearing things that a man is supposed to wear. God hates it. Yeah, but the same way. I got right now that y'all so I'm going to ask you this. Look around at all the, 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 the day, look around I really look good at it. I what do know all the men have on, bro? Hold up. What you say, sis? It's bombing, y'all. What do we have on, bro? All the men out here have on pain. What's wrong with I got a woman is not supposed to wear that which pertains unto a man. You have on pants. Pants belong to a man. You got kids, brother? You know what? You got a daughter? Okay, if you had, you got a son. Is it okay for your son to wear a dress? Why? Why can't your daughter, why can't your son wear a dress? No, I'm not against you. Because he don't supposed to. Now, what, the, what we've lost is a woman is not supposed to wear pants. We look at it and we think it's acceptable because we now 60 years later. How old are you, brother? You don't agree with that? Come in. So explain this to me. What you're seeing is a reprobate mind. Right. The scripture comes out. The scripture is clear as day. But we don't want to harm him because we are rebellious. Is it okay for you to wear a dress? No. Why not? I don't have no desire to wear no dress. Okay, but why couldn't you wear a dress if you wanted to? Because it belongs to who? Okay. Say it, it's okay. Okay, okay. hold on, let me stop. Come on. Hold on, okay. Hold on, hold on. He good, no, he's talking to Mike. He good, he good. Go ahead, do good, brother. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go ahead and do that with me. And that was the whole oh, you talking to Mike? Uh, 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 high heels, a part of woman attire? Absolutely correct. Wrong. You got high heels on? Wrong. No, let me tell you. Talk, tell me. Hold on, let me tell you. It's so much fun. In the 1600s century, man was wearing high heels before woman was. Wrong. They was dead wrong, brother. Would you would you wear some high heels right now? Brother, this is common sense. Is it okay for a man to wear high heels? No. With, all right, let me ask you this. We don't never want to give our opinion on somebody else. Right now, we're scared to talk about what's wrong with our community. So I'm going to ask you this. Would you wear high heels? No. Why not, bro? But if, they, but if it didn't mess your back up, you would put them on. Yeah, no. Why not, bro? Let's be real. Because it, it belongs to a woman. Stop. We got to cut this out. Read Zephaniah. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. Because it's bigger than what I want you to do. No, this is what the Most High God is requiring of you. It's a commandment for a woman and a man to wear specific things. Read. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. In the day of the Lord's sacrifice, be sure. That's when Jesus the Christ comes back. It's going to be a lot of killing going on. That's why I say it's in the day of his sacrifice. Yeah. Guess who's going to be getting killed? Guess who's going to be getting killed? All of those who do not want to keep the commandments that this Bible says. Read. That I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such that are clothed with strange apparel. That are what? That are clothed with strange apparel. You've never heard in the Christian church that when Christ comes back, people are going to be punished for what they're wearing. Have you ever heard that? Have you ever heard that before? Let's read it again. This is coming out of the Bible. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. It's strange to walk down the street and see a man dressed like a woman. That's strange. The Most High God is sending his son back to punish that. It's a strange thing to see a woman dressed like a man. That's not how we were raised as the children of God. That's how we learn here in Babylon from the white man. It's not okay to come outside in your undergarments. And then we wonder why we can't find a man. The man that you will meet is the man that wants some sex for you. When you come out of the house and you say, well, I look sexy today, yes, you do. The man that's going to meet you is going to say that in his mind and want to have sex with you. That's it. He's not taking you home. Since I'm married, been happily married. I've been with mine for 23 years. Four beautiful children. And I would promise, 
I would not approach a woman like yourself. And it, I don't want to be disrespectful, but what I'm telling you is, you're disrespecting yourself, sis. It is. Brother, if you have a little girl. Wait a minute, before you move on, I'm respecting come on, all, those come on. all those sides. All those sides. I really, really am serious. Yes, Why am I disrespecting myself for what I have done? Because you're showing what's meant for your husband to see. That's the most basic way I can I can give it to you, sis. Your shape, your, your curves, all that stuff is for your husband. That's not for all of these men to walk down the street and lust after you. That's not what it's for. That's it. If you... And listen, it's, it's love. Because I'm treating the sister like she's my big sister. I'm treating her like she's my aunt. I would, I'd be like, auntie, cover up. You know what I'm saying? Put on something modest. So that when a brother does approach you, he's approaching you because of your mind. He's approaching you because of your spirit. He's approaching you because of your good works. Not simply because he looks like something he wants to lay down with. Does that make sense to anybody? Get that wisdom of Solomon. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 16. Thus, in process of time, an ungodly custom grown strong. It says in a process of time. That's why I asked you about your great grandmother. Because once upon a time, you would not catch our sisters in pain. As a matter of fact, come up here and look. I want you to see our sisters picking cotton. Come here, bro. Come in. Come in. If you look right here on the sand, we got sisters that are picking cotton. More than likely, they probably down there in South Carolina, Georgia, Texas, North Carolina, on the plantations where it's 85, 95, 105 degrees. They're working. What are they working in? What do they have on? They have on dresses. What do the men have on? They have on pants. That's what I'm saying. We respected ourselves. Even in a lower state such as slavery, we still knew that the Most High God commanded us to have a specific dress code. All praises. Finish that out. Read. Thus, in the process of time, was an ungodly custom grown strong was kept as a law and that thing is grown strong now it's nothing for you to look around and see a woman with, a, with pants on it's normal but according to the scriptures it's not what you also see is becoming normal now for a man to wear a dress you're saying your rappers do it you're saying some of your basketball players your football players that is the white man with his hand up their back pushing them into our community to put forth bad examples the next thing you know you have these same drug dealers these same murderers that's in your neighborhood, guess what? They gonna have on a damn dress. They gonna be as, as mean and nasty as they wanna be, but they gonna have on a dress. And according to the brother, maybe some high heels. They've been lying to us. We gotta stop and get back to what this book says. It lays it all out for us. All of your instructions are here. All right? Um, give me that in rock when you can tell a man by his gate. Get that, get that. Everything we're saying, it's no Bible across the street. That's probably the most annoying thing. It's no Bible coming out over there. Read. The book of Sarah, chapter 19, verse 26. What I need you to understand is every brother that comes up here, when he tells you something, he's going to prove it to you out of the Bible. None of these are our vain imaginations or thoughts. All of these are God's words. Read. Verse 29. A man may be known by his look. It says a man may be known by his look. Now the Bible was written in a masculine form, but all of these laws, statutes, and commandments pertain to the men and the woman. So read. And one that hath understanding by his countenance. It says you can tell a man or a woman by how they look. It says you can tell that they have understanding by their countenance, meaning the way that they carry themselves. Read. When thou meetest him, a man's attire, an excessive laughter, and gait shoot what he is. It says a man's what? Excessive laughter. Uh -uh. A man's attire. What's, it, what's attire? It's your clothing, right? That's what we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes. It says a man's attire, a man's clothing does what? A man's attire and excessive laughter and gait shoot what he is. When you take pride in yourself, you get up, you look yourself in the mirror, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, you make sure your, your clothes are high and depressed. They don't have stains, they don't have blemishes, they don't have rips or holes. Because you take pride in yourself. That's I can look at a person and tell what they think about themselves by the way they carry themselves. The Bible is telling you that. Our women, they think lowly of themselves, and you can see it by the way they talk, dress, walk, and act. Go to Deuteronomy 76 real quick. Because what we don't understand is who we are. We think we just niggas. We think we 
just black folks here in Baltimore. We think we Haitians. We think we Dominicans. You are none of those things. Let's see what the Bible says you are. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art an holy people. It says you are an holy people. The word holy means separate. You are not a nigga. You are, you are far more than you can have ever imagined. The Bible is telling you how great of a people you are, but we don't want to hear it. The reason that we don't want to hear it is because we understand that all the responsibility that comes along with being great. Read. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Miss Sharon, you ever heard that before? Read it again. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Bible just said that if you are so-called black, Hispanic, or Native American, that you were created better than all people on the face of the earth. You understand that? There's no equality. All that everybody can be saved. All of that God, Jesus came for. It's, it's a lie. The Bible just said he has favorites. Read it again. These not my words. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Big brother, you ever heard that before? You ever heard that before, bro? The Bible is telling you that God has a favorite people. Everybody's not equal in God's eyes. So if you have a favorite child, or you have a favorite car, a favorite pair of shoes, anything that's your favorite, you treat it a little different, right or wrong. God has a favorite group of people. You take a different care of it. You require more of it. The Bible just said that the so-called black, Spanish, and Native Americans are God's favorite people. He requires something of us. You can't walk around here and look like everybody else, talk like everybody else, be like everybody else. We have to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. Let me ask you, if you look around, does it, do we look like we're God's favorite people? If you look around, we said no. If you look at our community, does this look like where God's favorite people live? It doesn't, right? That's not a hard question. We got to find out why. We are so special. We are so chosen, favored above all. Why do we live like this? It's because of the conversation we just had. We read the law, statutes, and commandments and say, nah, that's not what that means. Or we read and understand it and say, nah, I'm not going to do that. Listen. Listen to what you just said. Say that on the mic, bro. Say it on the mic. We do the same thing the children of Israel did when they were freed from the Pharaoh. Now guess what? What you said, not only is it true, it's a fact. I mean, right now, we are still those children of Israel. That's what we're telling you. We're not comparing ourselves to the children of Israel. Israel. I'm telling you that you are the children of Israel. You went on punishment back then because you didn't want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. You simply getting punished, brother. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth